This lesson is about scientific notation. It's a way that scientists use to write numbers that are either really, really big or really, really small. Rather than writing out all the zeros, they write it as a power of 10. Okay? So any number, really big or really small, can be written as a power of 10. And it follows a pattern. The pattern is that the first number in scientific notation is always between 1 and 10. So whatever number is given, you take the first two digits, or the first two non-zero digits, or the first whatever the non-zero digits are. In this case, it's 8,600,000, right? So if you put a decimal point between the 8 and the 6, you have a number between 1 and 10, 8.6. OK? If it's just 8 million, then you would just write it as 8. And you'd leave the, the zero digits off. You include all non-zero digits in the first part. OK? But always put the decimal point after the first number to make the to make it between 1 and 10. Does that make sense? Yes. Then the next part of scientific notation is the power of 10. Okay? It's the power of 10 from the first digit on. So it is, what is the power of 10 in this number? In other words, how many zeros, or how many digits behind the first number is there? So it would be 10 to the 6. Right. There's 6 digits behind the first number. That gives us the power of 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 6 digits. Okay? So you'd write 8.6 times 10 to the 6th power. Okay? This is another. Um, really small number that we could write into scientific notation. Again, we would need to put the decimal point after the first non-zero digit. So here's the first non-zero digit. We'd put the decimal point after that to make it 4.2. Okay? Then, count the places to that decimal point. One, two, three. Now instead of this being 10 to the third power, which would make it a thousand, this is 10 to the negative third power. Or, remember we just learned about negative exponents being the number below the division bar. So, another way to write this is Oops. Get the pen here. Is one over zero point? Oh wait, one um, ten thousand four point two uh, forty two ten thousands, right? So forty two. Ten thousands. I'm trying to think of, you have to read the number and then write it as a fraction, right? Forty-two ten thousandths is another way to write this. So the power of ten is below the division bar, which makes it a negative power. That's what I was trying to say. The power of ten is ten thousandths, and since it is below the division bar, it's a negative exponent. If it was above the division, division bar, if this was 10,000, we would write it above the division bar, right? <coughs> so to multiply numbers, one of the things you'll be doing is multiplying powers of 10, or numbers of scientific notation. First, multiply the digits that you're given, the first part of the scientific notation. So 1.6 times 
times 10 to the 6th power and 3.7 times 10 to the 4th power. We can rearrange these numbers because of the community of property. So we could do 1.6 times 3.7 first. And then write that number and add the exponents. Why would we add the exponents? Because they're both the same base, right? They have the same base. They're both base 10, right? See? 10 to the 6th power, 10 to the 4th power, 10 to the 6 plus 4, 10 to the 10. Okay? Let's review. Uh, go to your assignment on page 223. 8 billion 900 million. Number one. To write this number in scientific notation. What would we do? Might as well copy this one down. <coughs> John. Oh, I'm sorry, I missed some zeros here. Missed damn zeros. There we go. That's number one. Eight billion nine hundred million. How to write it in scientific notation? What's the? What would we write first? Joey. Eight point nine. Right. We have to put the decimal point behind the first non-zero digit. Now we have to use the 9 because it's a non-zero digit. If this was 8,912,000,000, then we would use 8.912. Okay? So include all the non-zero digits in your first number. Then we have to figure out what? Henry. How many zeros there are? How many zeros? Not, not exactly. It's not just the zeros that we count, but it's all the digits. It's all the digits, all the places behind the first, first number. Yep. So how many are there? Nine. Nine. We're going to use 10 to the ninth power, and we have to multiply. This is the number in scientific notation. This is this number in scientific notation. Oops. Nine, one, two. Okay. Look at number 8 in your assignment. To convert a number from scientific notation to standard form, 5.94 times 10 to the 7th. What does this give us? Henry? Um, that gives you 59,400,000. Okay, it gives us the first three numbers. Yep, the first three digits. Five, nine, four. Without the decimal point. Yep. That's, that's right. What you, what you said was right. But I'm just going to break it down for you a little bit so you don't have to use your calculator. Okay? <coughs> now, what does the 10 to the 7th power tell you? Lydia? That there are seven digits after the first. Right, seven digits after the first number. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay? 
So we have to put the commas in in the right place, and we have our number. Yep. What about what about this one? 2.104 times 10 to the negative 8th power. This is a negative exponent. So now we're going to work the opposite direction. We're going to start on the right and work our way to the left because this is a really small number. So again, these are the first, well I should say the last part of the <coughs> number. So we'll write it at the end. 2104. Those are the last four digits. Right? Now, again we're working backwards. How many places up to the first non-zero number. How many places would go to behind the two right here where that decimal point was? That's what we're counting to. Michael? No, we would look at the power again. Nope, because we're only moving it eight places to the left from where the decimal point was. Uh, oh, yeah. Okay? So seven. So seven, yeah. There's going to be seven zeros in front of the two. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then the decimal point. That's right. It's a really small number. Now, when you're writing these out, Here's what I'd encourage you to do. First, you have to write a zero in front of the decimal point. And then, I like to group the zeros into groups of three. Even though there's no comma there, it helps you to figure out how many zeros you have without counting and recounting. So three, six, seven. And that helps you to count those easily. Okay? Again, eight places from where the decimal point was to where you have to move it. Okay? I see. Isaac. Makes the calculator is finally wrong at the four ones. Uh, and it doesn't have enough places in the calculator to even write that. Overflow number. error. Yeah. 